Okay. Y'all <laughs> see this in the post? Yes. Yes. Just reading. This is from our workbook. You know what? I wrote it and I still like to have it around to remind myself of what I wrote. And this is the workbook for all those that can't. Oh, yeah. Right? Some of you, uh, no, you're all on. Okay, good. And uh -huh. for those that haven't seen it or because we're replaying this uh, for a whole week, this is the workbook, but page eight, I was going through this. I go through it from time to time because uh, as you know, the God's honest truth is God gave it to me. I didn't like make it up and put it together and design it for you guys to lose weight and feel good because I didn't have a clue. I knew how to food combine and I knew everything there was about organic foods and good eating but the habitual ritual of how we eat our foods when we eat it and the the timing of everything the whole through the day especially phase one was immediately downloaded into my brain and it went into a workbook the first workbook i was forced into um, writing which um i started doing this lifestyle and within a week my girlfriend that is a lymphatic body wrapper and she works with the celebrities for the, get them on the red carpet she's the one that noticed she walked into the house and she looked at my backside doing the kitchen cleaning the dishes and she goes wow what are you doing and i said the dishes what do you think you know said, no i can tell from behind you look you've done something I said, well, I'm doing this, uh, this thing. And she goes, but I, I do body wrapping. I do lymphatic body wrapping. Come on in, I'll wrap you and I'll get you a lot thinner. I said, no, I'm, I'm, I'm good with this. I'm fine with this. And she goes, okay. So then the following week she shows up and she goes, okay, that's it. What are you doing? And I said, this is something God gave this to me. It came in at a time in my brain when I was in a panic. I, I just didn't like the way I looked, the way I felt. I was heavy. My daughter was finally in a safe place. You guys know the, the story about that. And I, I, I opened up the pantry and I went, oh dear God, oh dear God. I gotta get this off like yesterday. And again, uh, I'll always repeat it because it's just so amazing. The voice came into my ear and said, Jackie, you know what to do. And I'm like, what do you mean? I'm like, wait, I'm alone in my kitchen. Somebody's talking to me. You know what to do. You've known all along, you know what to do. And all of a sudden I stood there and I was, contemplating what's happening to me. And I had the pantry door open and I went, wow, that's really weird. Yeah, I'm just gonna start this way. And I turned around and I went sort of like a robot and just started the whole workbook. So the workbook really is something that I wrote just for myself to, you know, this is of course the second, uh, whatever you call it, but the first one was just scribbles, you know? And then um, she goes, okay, you gotta, you gotta tell me what this is and you gotta put it down on paper. And I said, there is no way I can put this on paper. I'm just doing this kind of automatically. No, you don't understand. I have clients, I have people. Okay, so I put it on paper. I put it in uh, on, the, on, on the computer. I wrote it up and then I, I kind of, I don't know how I did it, but I wasn't that good at doing it, but I did it. I put it down in several pages on a Word doc, and then I printed it off. I stapled the ends and I gave it to her. So then like, it was about five weeks later, she calls me and she goes, okay, now you have to put this on a website. And I'm like, oh no, come on. No, I'm not doing that. And she goes, no, you don't understand. I have people, international people. They want this, they need this. So one thing led to another and you guys know where we are now, 
but we decided to spruce up this workbook and it's nice it's bound the whole thing and uh from time to time i'll open it up i'll go damn that's good <laughs> but the science behind flush your fat for good there's there's a method to the madness and there is science it's biochemistry physiology and this is why you guys have to really understand why you're eating the fruit in the morning what is the main principle of when you wake up in the morning you go and you eat the fruit who knows why i know flushes you out start start the furnace there you go it flushes you out starts the furnace what else yep for, for the bowel i mean that's what you said yeah bowel that's movements good that's good too yeah, so the night before you've taken your probiotics, so the fruit is actually food for those probiotics. But when you, that's your breakfast, you're breaking your fast. Mm -hmm. And yeah. fruit is nature's what? Scrub breath. Yeah, the, get down with your bad self. Very good. <laughs> it's nature's scrub brush. So Sharon, you were right on about the bowels, but it does, it, it brings up your blood sugar naturally because you're doing low glycemic. And you're, you're, when the fruit starts to go through, you've got for low glycemic fruit, and I want you guys to eat nice bowls. Somebody the other, who was that? Somebody put, I think it was Pat Campbell. I don't know, she's always in the kitchen. Um, beautiful bowls of fruit. Mm -hmm. the the i do frozen cherries a lot of the time with cut up apples and i'm i'm waiting for the mangoes to come out to taste real good and throw that in with there uh the we don't have red organic grapes yet but those are incredible very low glycemic and really really good for your bowels it it's good for the flora of your bowels and to feed those little uh, guys that are colonizing from your probiotics the night before. So the fruit is so essential. It's not just, oh, this is a good tasting bowl of fruit. The fruit has a meaning to it. It's to clean, get the bowels moving, gets your haustras, the haustras inside the colon, um, your peristalsis, everything's starting to move. It's biochemistry, physiology. So when hmm. we eat the fruit, don't sit there and just have like a half a half an apple. What, Margie? I was, I was wondering how much we, I think sometimes we eat a lot, too much. Okay. I have been known to eat two bowls. And I've also, mm -hmm. you know, when it depends, it, your, your brain is trained. When you do this on a regular basis, it trains the brain. I might have a small bowl of, of frozen red grapes. I mean, frozen um, cherries, because all of a sudden I'm OCD on those. Probably because I need the vitamin C so much. Um, but also I cut up apples and it tastes so good. Or I'll throw in some blueberries and it's so good. And I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, you know, I want another bowl. Should I say, oh, no, oh, no, you can't do that. <laughs> My brain is saying, you want, you need that. So I go and I eat another bowl of fruit. What's interesting mm -hmm. is some days it's plenty. It's enough. Other days mm -hmm. I'll go for the second bowl and right in the middle of it, I'm done. Or I eat the second bowl. It's not going to put weight on you. It's going to answer the prayer that your body was just, you know, praying for is I need some of that stuff that the fruit has to offer. Hmm. So do not be afraid to eat. Uh, I mean, it's like goat yogurt. Who's ever had two bowls of goat yogurt? Yeah. Always. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have like two or three apples. I'll have a bunch of apples if I have them all, like two or three of them. Yeah, and do you chop them up or do you just eat them? Yeah, I chop them up and then just eat a big plate of sliced apples. Yeah, good. Is it the Fuji? Do you like the Fuji? 
I like Gala, but I have different kinds. I have Fuji too sometimes. Fuji's the bomb. Crispy. <laughs> but when you throw in frozen cherries, it's a whole nother story. So I want you guys to understand the science behind that. And all of you answered correctly. So when you wake up and you're eating fruit, you're not just eating it because it tastes good. You're eating it because it's going to, you know, a lot of people don't know when you eat your fruit or your food, it goes down, you're chewing, you're masticating, goes down your throat. And then where does it go? Everybody forgets where it goes. But it's got a, it has a whole journey in your body. Hmm. Fruit is extremely important because it's going to go into your your gut for digestion, absorption, and elimination. That was the message that came to me. You've got to digest your foods. You, the reason why is you just, you know, that's why drinking your foods, you don't really digest it. People that are doing uh, these shakes in the morning, they're doing more harm than good. You're not getting all that you need. So, you know, a smoothie, well, God gave you teeth, chew it. It makes all the difference in the world. And the harder to chew, the more you lose. So the apples, uh, what's another fruit that's hard to chew? Pears. Pears. I like those Bosque pears, you know. Um, what's another fruit? <laughs> Peaches, nectarines. Yeah. There you go. Those are the, and, and they haven't come out yet, but when they do, man, those are good. So, okay. So berries. what is it? Strawberries. Yeah. They're not hard to chew, but strawberries are great. You just want to yeah. make sure they are uh, organic. If you get mm -hmm. red grapes, when they're finally organic, they're delicious when you have a nice big bowl of fruit and they're so good for the flora in your gut. And uh, red grapes have um, resveratrol in it. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard of resveratrol? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. High antioxidants and then they put on your skin and everything. But it's really fun later in the day when you're having your second serving of fruit to freeze some of those red grapes. So put them in with your apples and they're like little popsicles. Hmm. <clears throat> All right, so when we go into accelerated fat burning state, that means you have accomplished what? Ketosis. 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 Good. Nutrition. Hi, Idris. Hi Just saw you pop up. Um, <laughs> nutritional ketosis. A lot of people are going, oh, no, I'm a diabetic. I can't do that. No, no. This is nutritional ketosis. Mm -hmm. Oh, is that like the keto diet? No, it's not. The keto diet is completely different than this. And this is not a diet. This is a lifestyle. What do we say about the word diet? Has dye in it. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Michelle, the first three letters say die. <laughs> you just want to die when you're on it. <laughs> but we have to realize that what you guys are doing, especially how are you going to feel and how are you going to look by the end of July? right we have to have uh a focus on that the end of july so we're uh where are we may 11th right so we got the middle of may so we have the next couple of weeks you can really pull off at least five to seven pounds okay mm -hmm. and then the next month uh june you can pull off a good 10 that's 17 pounds don't forget we don't we don't talk about pounds most of the time because it's really about inches because your muscles are heavier and you could have somebody that's five feet, uh, five, eight, and they're 200 pounds. And then you can have somebody that's five, eight and they're 200 pounds, but their body composition is completely different. 
because of their muscle tone. What we're after is adipose tissue. We've got to get the adipose tissue off and we have to get the, the fat that can strangle our organs. Do you guys know the name of that? Visceral. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. And that's, you can't liposuction that out. And that's <laughs> that suffocates all of our organs. This is all about health, but in the long run, you wind up looking younger and healthier and better. But can you say that again about the adipose tissue? Is that there's visceral fat and then there's adipose tissue. Adipose is the white fat, you know, the fluffy white fat under our skin. The visceral fat is a harder fat that surrounds our organs. I think last week I told you about a 28 year old boy, man, that oh, anybody in his twenties is a boy to me. Um, but uh, he's 28 years old, he was at a picnic and he, he passed out, he dropped, well, he eventually dropped dead there because they had to rush him to the hospital. And it turned out that his visceral fat was surrounding his heart. Wow. Yeah, and it suffocated him. So this is, you know, when I say 20 pounds overweight is linked to a lot of health conditions, it's not, you know, losing fat, losing weight. First and most important is your health, longevity, being able to breathe, being able to walk without your ankles or your hips or anything hurting you, being able to have the energy to be able to do what you want to do without feeling, you know, exhausted. Next, you want to look good. Everybody does. We want to look good. We want to look cute in our clothes, um, especially Bill. He's got a real cute dress he's working on. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that, um, you know, it goes hand oh, in hand. Oh, do not to tell, Margie. <laughs> <laughs> She's, yeah, I'm telling you, man. Keep your, your friends close and your enemies closer, Bill. Yeah, they're hot pants, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that we have to have a mindset that what one eight. I got another training. I'll catch the replay. Okay, bye. honey. Thanks for joining us. Uh huh. Bye bye. Okay. Bye. bye. We have to get our heads in the right place. Our mindset. Mm -hmm. So when you eat that fruit, you, the first thing in your mind is to go through your gut and to move the bowels push the poop through from last night and your fruit is going to feed those little probiotics that you took the night before. Okay. Cause everybody knows to do that, right? Take your probiotics mm -hmm. right before your head hits the pillow. Right, Michelle. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> I always, Michelle always goes, uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> Another thing. I do, well, you know, Okay, here we go. Confession. Yeah, here we go. So, Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. What? I actually have them in a jar right next to my bed because I thought that would help me to remember to take them, and I don't. Okay, so do you have a cell phone? Yeah. Okay, so you put your alarm there, and the time that you go to bed, it goes off. I, I have... I have so many alarms on my phone because I always keep the heat on. And then the whole family is, oh, what'd you do to us? You know, oh, I fell asleep on the couch. I'm sorry. So I have an alarm to turn off the heat. I have an alarm to take my stuff in the afternoon. I have alarm when I go to bed. I don't have to worry about that anymore because I've accomplished remembering to take my probiotics. Only because it's so darn important. Yeah. Yeah. Like put it on your pillow or something, you know. Sometimes I do well, that. Are you do you have it was close to my pillow? You would think I would remember. It's sort of like the um the D GI zyme. You know, you have to take one GI zyme before every protein meal, right? 
Y'all do that? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Thank you, Kristen. She we does. Learn it. <laughs> okay. Except for yogurt. And do we need it before the quinoa as well? No. Okay. No, but I've had clients that have had to take it even before their latte because their digestion was so poor. They needed help all the time with their bowels getting to, to digest and absorb. And then after a while, they didn't need it. They didn't need to do that. But um, the GI zyme was always hard for me, but I knew I was told. I was told, you want this fat off? Do you want to feel good? Do you want to get your bowels going great? Because the, the trauma that I was going through with my daughter, uh, nothing was working, you know? So uh, it was like, you have to take one GI zyme before every protein. And it was like, oh my God, I forgot it again. And then I'd take it in the middle of the meal. So what I, I took it seriously, I taped one on the back of my head. <laughs> Yes, I <laughs> on the right hand so I go up to feed myself and I'm like oh there it is. do what you have to do you want to go right I just set my alarm there you go see that's called immediate massive action well if I don't do it now it's not happening <laughs> uh can you guys hear me my microphone and everything is okay yes uh-huh okay mm -hmm. I just pulled you guys up a little here Okay, so it's, it, this is why I keep saying it's habitual ritual. When you go into nutritional ketosis, you have to be absolutely starving your body of the starches it's used to getting, the sugars, the starches, the breads, the pastas, the chips. And within a week to two weeks is when you finally notice something's going on. I mean, no ketosis. <laughs> that sounds good, Sharon. <laughs> oh, is that a straw? Sorry, that's <laughs> slurp. <laughs> so nutritional ketosis is when your body starts living off your own fat. This is where you're going to get more energy. This is where you're going to all of a sudden find your clothes being a little looser. And just like this stupid hairdo, I have to wait till it gets down to here to, to get the style that I'm going for. Probably after that, you guys, it's all gonna be cut off. But I made a commitment, right? Commitment to grow this hair down to about here. <laughs> and so every day it's blow dry, you know, I have to do whatever I have to do to get it to do something. So same thing with our bodies. If you, if you get uh, like um, antsy and you're upset and you're not losing the weight like you wish you could, you probably are, but you don't know it because your body, once it starts living off your own fat, everything's going to switch. Nutritional ketosis is where your body's going to live off your own fat for fuel. So you might not know what's happening deep inside. That's what's happening. And you might not see yourself, uh, you know, getting thinner and thinner. Same thing with my hair. I don't see it growing. So when I wake up, it's just harder to take care of because it's so darn long. But if you guys wanting to lose what? What are we going for? 40, 60, uh, 100, 150. I'm working with a gentleman. Um, is that you, Kristen? Are you? Yeah. Okay, cool. I'm 200, I think. You think 200? Yeah. Oh, good. You're going to be with us for a while. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm working with um, Pat Campbell's kid, and he was uh, four. 40 something like that and now he's down into the 356 and um he's not doing anything except for this lifestyle and mm -hmm. he was uh you know eating a lot of junk eating a lot of foods that he liked 
everything that was bad for him. And it just kept getting out of control, out of control, out of control. Smoking a lot of cigarettes, maybe four packs a month. He was doing um, 14 cups of coffee. I told you guys that last week. You know, it was just a, a, a excessive, 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 because you can't help yourself. What happens if you start eating a lot of starches and sugars and things like this? It's it, it, after a while, it's not your fault anymore. You can't stop yourself because the craving's so terrible. But if you go through that initial nutritional ketosis, which can take a week to two weeks, and then after that, you're living off of your fruit, you're living off of your latte, you're living off of your uh, your protein and and carbohydrates, which is not your starches, but your vegetables. And again, you want those vegetables to be, you know, not all mushy. You want them hard to chew. The broccolis, the cruciferous, you can steam them. You know, it's even in Jackie's chicken salad. I just take off the um, the florets. I don't, you know. I don't do the hard uh, stem system with that. I just take off the flowers. So when you go into nutritional ketosis, uh, you start to feel different and you could get a headache because you're detoxing from the sugar and the starches. Uh, you could absolutely have that day of exhaustion when I uh, go on to phase two, and then I feel, you know, I, I'm compelled to go on to phase one, and there's a certain time, I could be on phase two all the time, but I feel better all on phase one. And when I travel, I just wanna do phase one. But on phase two, uh, I, I can maintain my weight just fine, except later on, it's easy. It's easy to grab a rice cake and put butter on it. It's easy to just grab a chip. It's easy to eat starches that before you know it, okay, you're satisfied, but an hour to two hours later, you're famished, you know? And that's the problem with starches. So when you eat protein all the time, your protein keeps your blood sugar level. And sometimes when I get off of phase two and I go, you know what? It's time to do a couple of months of phase one. I, it takes me about a week, maybe four to five days. And I can feel myself going into nutritional ketosis. And mm -hmm. sometimes I don't, I don't, it doesn't feel very good sometimes because my body is making the switch to live off my fat. And, but it's a good, I, I go, okay, this is good. I'm going into nutritional ketosis because I might want to just tighten up. The summer's coming. I want to wear, you know, no sleeves, tank top, some shorts. And I feel like I want to trim up a little bit. So I make mm -hmm. that choice to go into phase one again. Now with you, Kristen, phase one is for you. Yeah, I was remembering my ketosis day of exhaustion and I even got shaky and real cold. Yes, absolutely. I was driving home and I thought I wasn't going to make it. <laughs> oh my God. Because I was so cold and shaky. Yeah. But I, yeah, I, I got to get back to the ketosis. I let it slip. <laughs> well... The fact is, you've got the blueprint. You're here with us for support. You've got the blueprint. You know what to do. And you just have to be solid on your protein. Protein, protein, protein. And that's why I'm saying this is not the keto, you know, diet. You're just going into nutritional ketosis because on the keto diet, you know, they don't really talk about you got to eat fruit twice a day and make sure your protein's digested before you do that. And then hmm. they tell you certain vegetables, yay or nay, but really all the vegetables that God has given us is absolutely amazing for everything that we need in our body, but we can't do um, the high glycemic vegetables. 
We have to do low glycemic vegetables. So get hooked on certain foods that you will be solid on. You know, something that I'm really, really hooked now because I'm on phase one now. I'm, I felt as though I have to go on phase one because you guys are on phase one. And I'm thinking, mm -hmm. okay, it, you know, I, I don't want to sit here and eat a rice cake in front of you. And to tell you the truth, some days when I eat a rice cake with butter on it, which is fine, or I eat um, something that's starchy, I don't always feel good after that because I have been so long on phase one. The, um, I'm trying to think of the, the tribe in Alaska, uh, the, um, oh gosh, Just, it's on the tip. Are they into it? Yes. I was going to say it's on the tip of my tongue. Can you see it? <laughs> the thing is, they've done it for centuries, 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 centuries. They don't have starch up in Alaska, deep up there. And um, they also mm -hmm. took those people in the tribe after years and years and years and generations of those people eating phase one. Then they did an experiment with them and gave them some starch, even sweets, but it didn't affect them to go and, and continue to eat and eat and eat that because they didn't feel good and their bodies were so used to eating the other way and they were always healthy and strong. So it's really important that we get into nutritional ketosis. Your, your, um, your quinoa, is a seed. So putting butter with that is great because it's like a hot porridge, but you don't want to put syrup on it or agave, anything like that, because you're going to blow it. Anything that you eat that has a sweetness to it, you're going to blow it. You have to start <laughs> out your body from all the starch and the sugar. So, mm -hmm. and yes, Kristen, you can, you know, I, I have gone into nutritional ketosis sometimes and I'm like, oh, I have a headache. Well, why is that? Because the starch was converting to sugar or my body's making the switch. And interestingly enough, if you were getting chills, that's very interesting because when your body starts to burn up your fat, your body stopped burning your fat. And that's what you were feeling, the effects of nothing happening until when you go into a full-on nutritional ketosis, your body warms up. Hmm. Very fascinating. And that's your body burning up the fat. So that's hmm. what we have to do, Michelle, burn the fat. Hmm. And how are you hmm. doing this, Michelle? Didn't have a very good week. Why? I didn't exercise enough. Um, my supplements, I am dragging a week behind. So I'm like right at the last bare minimum of my supplements before the my new ones come, but it's okay. Um, and I mean, I'm, I'm not eating anything bad, but I think I've had too many days where you know, I've had too much time in between eating. Um, well, like even today, like right now, I kind of feel a little hungry. I had a little of the chicken salad earlier. Um, I did finally, I didn't realize that right near Trader Joe's in Danbury is a Whole Foods. So I did finally find an organic mayonnaise there. So I was able to make the chicken salad again because I didn't like it when I made my own mayonnaise. Not to mention that it's a real pain in the ass to do that. Um, <laughs> Watch Dr. Vicky do it every week. She's got, brrr, you know, this thing. That, well, I don't have that thing. So maybe I should get one of that. Thing. Yeah, yeah. No, you need one of those brrr things. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, so I don't know. And I just, you know, just having an emotional week. And, you know, I don't want you to tell me to cry later. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. Even well, if I do tell you cry later, you know. But. I will say though that like last week when I did, I was, you know, feeling emotional about my weight and then I did exercise a little harder, like either the next day or the day after. And, 
and then I also got to realizing that I, I haven't measured myself again since we started this. And I probably should do that because even though I don't particularly like the way I look still, I'm sure that I've lost something. So if I measured myself, that would actually make me feel better probably. Maybe, I never did. I you didn't, I, no, I wanted to be like a little greyhound dog on a track. And yeah. I didn't want to lift my head up until it was all gone. Every, well, I, everybody's yeah. different. For you, your face looks different. You're thinner down here. And you know, women, we lose it from the top down. Yeah. Hmm. The thing with you, Michelle, is that um, you're- I won it yesterday. Yeah. But you're also very hard on yourself. Mm -hmm. well, because I've never had to do this before. <laughs> so yeah, I, I've only had like maybe 20 pounds at the most to lose in my whole life. Like every time I ever lost weight, I always caught it before it got out of hand. Right. And it is so out of hand that I, yeah, I'm. I know exactly how you feel when I woke up that one morning and I looked at myself and I said, there is no turning back now. I, I, had, I was a dancer. I was a gymnast. I was a dancer. I was on stage, a guitar player. I had like size whatever. I don't know. It was small. <laughs> and uh, I never had to worry about my weight ever. I didn't, uh, you know, I teenager, maybe when I'd get a little heavy because I was a teenager going into hormones, but no, I was exercising and married and on the road as a musician, dancing and singing, and then, uh, you know, had kids that blew everything. <laughs> and, <laughs> but, um, you know, your mind changes. Oh, I'm trying to look real cute. No, you got to change a diaper. So <laughs> things change in your life. But uh, after my husband passed away, well, the first one, then the second one, and then my daughter mm -hmm. went nuts. It was like, I, I, I was in survival mode. I just had to do what I had to do to save her life. That's all. I didn't care. And I was way on the back burner. So of course, I, I put on a good 40 pounds. And when, mm -hmm. I, when I finally knew she was safe, and then I, I woke up and I walked into the bathroom with the whole wall was a mirror and I was like oh my god now what you've gone this far so you know my my 40 pounds is like Kristen's 200 it's the same thing it's devastating when you think I have 200 well that's just that's two years for you Kristen yeah you're done I mean but two years do you realize in two years, it's over. And if you stay with the blueprint, you never have to struggle again. So, mm -hmm. yeah, you got to face two years. But I've worked with people that had to face five years. But they were going to die if they didn't do it. And they knew it. And they wanted their life to change. How much do you have to lose, Michelle? What were we talking well, you know, I haven't weighed myself in over two years. When I was at the doctor two years ago, I had, I was 217. Um, I know that I lost a lot, you know, when I first started doing this. And to be honest with you, I don't, I don't, know, I don't know completely how I put so much weight back on, you know, like I didn't go back to eating crappy food aside from that peanut butter, but I mean, you know, I, I still was following phase one, just not, you know. Well, really what, remember when I first started this Zoom support call? First thing I said is, we're all under pressure. Mm -hmm. We don't even feel what's happening to us, but the whole country, different, and the world. I mean, if we all lived in Florida, it'd be a lot easier, but I live in California. It's crazy out here. And the stress, my clients have lost their businesses. They've lost their jobs. 
uh, many of my clients have moved away because they can't take the stress. Uh, it's it's being very op uh, oppressive. You're in New York, for God's sake. You don't even know the vibrations that are coming after you. I know. And, and I you put your head I'm down and try to do what you're supposed to do. And you know what I realized lately? That um, I figured this out because I was worried about my blood pressure because I felt like, what is happening to me? And I just wasn't getting full on breaths. And, and I'm a fanatic about, you know, I have to live long. So what is going on? And I realized I'm not breathing right. And I wrote mm -hmm. it in the book. You got it. Yeah. But I, you know, you ever notice when you're uptight or you're stressed or you're worried or you're concerned, you're not getting your full breath. And when you take in your breath, your, your oxygen, where does it go? If you can hold it for nine seconds and let it out, breathe in, breathe out, but don't mm -hmm. you breathe in. Okay. That, that is your oxygen to go into your muscles to start burning fat. But mm -hmm. I realized I started to sit down and I have a little spiritual meditation thing on my phone. And I sat down and I, I tested myself out and I sat down to listen to this. And then all of a sudden I realized I was yawning. I was starting to bring in my breath. I, I, I have not felt that way in a while, taking a full deep breath. <laughs> relax, you know. Yeah. That's one of the keys to losing weight. So if you know stress michelle stress that's why they say stress kills but right now like i said before it's like in the in the airplane you have to put the oxygen on you first then you put it on the kids or whatever yeah. it, it's really important that we pay attention to ourselves now um you are here every week and I'm excited about Kristen being here every week. Sharon, you got 10 pounds to lose, right? So mm -hmm. it's good that you're here though, because you you have a lot of knowledge and you add good support. And Margie, mm -hmm. Margie's been through even the first trials, you know, when we had the first <laughs> Bill and Margie, they were in the first trials. I remember Margie saying, um, excuse me. Um, do we have to drink coffee? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I was as sweet as could be. I said, yes, next. <laughs> now I actually do like it. Yes. But on, only in a latte, not plain. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And you know what? <laughs> coffee is so beneficial to our health and to how we breathe. You know, kids that are having asthma attacks, they say, oh, give them a Coke, you know? No, give them a little bit of coffee. It was a dialogue. Yeah. Um, so with you, Michelle, you're- I probably have 60, I'm gonna guess, pounds. Okay. Was that hard for you to say? Is that a what? Was that hard for you to say? No. <laughs> because I, I mean i i'm sitting here with my belly on my legs and i don't like it so, i mean it's, it's gotta be you know I, I mean you know there's gotta and then i feel the fat around my back you know so i mean mm. there's gotta be 30 then 40 50 on each 60 on each leg you know i mean okay okay <laughs> So I know that I'm not as bad as I was when I was 217. I know that I didn't get completely, you know, back yeah. there, but, you know, and, and I, I do know that it has to be, it can't be eat right, take your supplements, don't exercise, exercise, take your supplements, don't eat right. It has to be like all three things, period. Like you can't, uh -huh. you can't get away with you know, when, when you're one piece when of it. You're on a mission, say, for example, you're on a mission and you need to accomplish this mission, whatever it is, save a person's life, fight the war. There's a battle. 
whatever you have to do and you're on a mission, you can't really be sluggish about it. Mm -hmm. You have to kick ass and take names. That's because you have to, if you want it, if you want to win, if you want to get back to that weight, if you want to feel happy and energetic, if you want to, you're younger than me. How old are you? 60. Okay. I'm 69. Okay. And that means mm -hmm. we're, I don't even want to face the big 7-0, but. I'm not. You're going to have long hair. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> but long hair and I'm a 70 year old with long hair it's just that, and then you'll cut it yeah because <laughs> you'll say this makes me look too old well then they'll be <laughs> mad at me you said you'd practice but but you have to bring up your vibration you have to bring up this vibration yep. you have to get in touch with God you have to know that your source, our energy, everything that has made us, made our bodies want to be healthy, lean, energetic, and successful. I mean, that is the desire of the beast. But you, I, I notice you get down on yourself instead of saying, oh man, okay, I'm going to do that better next time. You cannot be down on yourself. I'll tell you when you can. That's why I told you cry later. I will tell you when you're ready to be really mad at yourself and kick yourself. But right now, no, you're on a mission. You're, you're in battle. You're in war. This is like you put your head down on the track like a little greyhound dog and you do not lift it up until you get where you want. So if you want to win the war, the battle... And it's harder now because there's so much suppression and oppression. So you have to close your ears and you don't give a crap about what the politicians are doing or what's happening. Now we have no yeah. gas. <laughs> the trucks aren't bringing the food. And, you know, it's crazy. And you're in New York, so you're going to start feeling all of that. You don't care. You understand? You don't care. Mm -hmm. Nobody cares. Yeah. The only thing we care about and you should care about is that you have to get back in that dress. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm saying it doesn't matter what your weight is. Kristen says 200, might not be 200. Right. But yeah. huh? I think I'm 340 something right now. So, and I'm 5'7". 340, 5'7". So you got to get down to 5'7". You got to get down to about 150. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I suck at math. So whatever that is, you guys help me out. But that's just on the scale. By the time, if when you start really feeling good and have the energy and you're briskly walking, and then if you get a little death cycle, you guys, did anybody get the death cycle yet? Or you have a bicycle or whatever? I do the death cycle. So I sit in a, a bar stool and I, I roll uh, with my feet, the death cycle. And I walk. I have dogs. If, you're, if your dogs are heavy, that means you need to walk more. And, and then I have a, a, a total gym where I try to do some core work. But it, 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 200 you, or, or uh, whatever the weight is, it, it, you're going to build muscle. You're going to be stronger. You're going to be leaner. You're going to, you're going to have a different shaped body. Michelle, you are in war. You, you're in war, dude. It's not like, oh, wait a minute. Um, the guns are coming. Uh, the enemy's right over there, but I'm going to take a break. No. Did George Washington say, you know, it's kind of cold. Maybe we shouldn't get into this boat, you know? <laughs> Got him in the middle of the night, right? You know the whole story about how the Atomic River and all that stuff. I love that stuff. But, I mean, it's war, especially yeah. if you're 60. And you want a boyfriend. You know why you want a boyfriend? 
Because if you get the right one, he'll cook for you. <laughs> you hate cooking. So you have to put it out there. I mean, God will give you what you want. And God will give you what you don't want. So whatever you picture, that's the vision that God picks up. So you cannot be hard on yourself anymore. You have to picture yourself exactly the way you want to be looking and you can spruce up your hair and put your makeup on or do whatever you want and you can say okay this is going to look really really good once I get those 60 off but how would you feel if you didn't work at trying to get those 60 off yeah I know I definitely feel better now than I did a month ago <laughs> good so cry oh my God. <laughs> okay guys it's six o'clock I love you guys. You guys are the best. And remember, we have to stay with nutritional ketosis. All right? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thanks so much. You're welcome. Bye. Have Bye. a good week. I will see you.